Hello one last time from Rogers Arena in Vancouver. I'm Alex Seinert, joined now by Brad Schlossman of the Grand Forks Herald following the 2019 NHL entry draft. Brad, another busy weekend for UND. Maybe not quite as busy as we expected, but still six players go off the board. Just give me your thoughts on what you saw this weekend from a UND perspective. Well, I thought we'd probably see five to ten, and they were in that range. Uh, one of the guys who I didn't have on my draft list uh, ended up going, and that was Jake Schmaltz. And um, I had talked to Chicago Steel GM Ryan Hardy during the season, and uh, he was high on Schmaltz all the time. He's saying, you know, I know his points aren't there. He's going to be a, a really good player, and of course, Boston takes him. So um, Ryan Hardy worked as a scout for Boston the last two years so you know they had some pretty good insight there on on how he's been but that that was kind of the one big uh, surprise there that he went and I think I was a little surprised that neither of the goalies went yeah, Cameron Rowe and uh, Adam Scheel and I, I thought both those guys had a good chance to go Scheel I thought with his freshman year uh, earned that uh, and Cameron Rowe had a, a pretty good year but uh, you know, playing behind Spencer Knight was tough, you know, so uh, I think he's doing the right thing going to junior for a year and developing before he comes to UND. Yeah, interesting, like we said, we both expected those two goaltenders to go, but again, with goalies, you never really know. I, you know, I, if, you was, if you were to tell me Adam Shields not going to get picked, I probably would have said, yeah, I mean, he's 30-year eligible. Uh, usually, they don't draft a lot of 30-year eligible guys, so uh, we could probably go through the list of how many 99 birthdays were taken today, and it's not going to be a lot. So I think some teams more and more are looking at the uh, second and third-year eligibles just because, um, you know, you see some late bloomers have success, but... Uh, obviously, those guys were both left on the table, and uh, they'll be both be coached by Carl Gehring the next couple of years, which makes it even more surprising that they weren't taken. But you know, uh, you know, as Brad Berry told us, neither was Ed Bell for, and neither was Aaron Dell. So, uh, time will tell. Doesn't mean that you because you don't get drafted, and sometimes, obviously, with goalies, we've seen this. Being a free agent is honestly a better situation you can pick your spot some of the players who did get drafted one going early the first pick of day two Shane Pinto going right off the board to a familiar spot in Ottawa what's with that connection with Ottawa and UND players yeah it's it's crazy you know if, if there's one connection it would be that uh, one of their scouts is Dan Besser who's the cousin of Brock Besser so he has some pretty good insight into the North Dakota program other than that you know they they did see Christian Willannon who they drafted in the fourth or fifth round can't remember which round exactly he came to North Dakota would have developed very, very well. Um, and after three years in college, he was ready to play in the NHL, jumped in and played right away. So, um, you know, I, I think that probably has to be a little bit enticing. And other than that, you know, some of their personnel the, today said, you know, a lot of it is just coincidence. We just really like the, a lot of the same players. Yeah, Pinto is going to be an impact type guy this next season. Just like Judd Caulfield and Harrison Blaisdell, another two Capera forwards that went in the fifth round, along with Cooper Moore, which was not a surprise necessarily that he got taken today, but the fact that he was the second UND off the, off the board, yeah. maybe a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, I, I think out of that group and the group coming in, uh, in my previews, I, I talked to a few scouts for scouting reports, and most people agreed Shane Pinto is the guy coming in. You know, uh, Judd Caulfield, uh, yeah, he's going to be a solid player, but he's just not going to produce like he doesn't have the potential to produce like Pinto does. And um, Blaisdell maybe will be able to add a little bit of offense too. But um, you know, Pinto can—he's uh, so versatile. You can, you know, put him at center wing. He can be on the power play. He can kill penalties. He played different positions on the power play and the diff two different teams used on this last year. So I mean, he's just so well rounded. You can you and you can use him in all sorts of. Uh, areas and that's what Ottawa was looking at too when they drafted him. Yeah, a lot of things that bode well for UND fans and for this team coming up in the future. Uh, last thing Brett, how much do you enjoy this weekend? It's just hockey central for a couple of days. It's a little bit crazy but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you know everyone, uh, almost everyone in the hockey world's here and uh, that included uh, North Dakota Brad Berry is here, Dane Jackson's here, um, you know you saw uh, Kerry Eads is a, you know now with the Fargo Force I saw he was here. Uh, just a, a lot of uh, and of course every NHL personnel is is here too so and it's just kind of fun you know we watch some of these guys play junior hockey and uh, going into college and it's kind of fun to see where at this point in time uh, these NHL teams are projecting where they're going to end up and uh, the next few years it's also fun to see the guys that they missed or the uh, the guys they hit on 
Um, we've seen both. You know, I, you know, you think back to guys like Troy Stetcher, uh, who plays in this building, was undrafted and he was missed. And another guy that plays in this building is Brock Besser, and uh, that was a hit. That was a hit. <laughs> they they hit that one. So it it's uh, it's just kind of fun to see some of these you know sort of prospect rankings, and uh, obviously all of us college hockey fans enjoy watching uh, how those shake out the next few years. That is one of the big fun parts of this whole process. So we know a little more now where some of the top prospects in the country are going. Next stop, the season, coming in October. Brad will be there, of course. We will be, too, from Midco SN. Big thanks to Brad for sticking around and for making this happen. Thanks for watching this weekend. This concludes our NHL draft coverage for 2019. We'll see you in October at the Ralph.